Good morning. And God bless you for being in the house of the Lord. Um, it's good to be here. Um, Matthew chapter 24. If you would open your Bibles to that. We see here as Jesus is addressing uh, the Jewish nation. Um, the disciples had some questions for him. And of course, Jesus is grand to have uh, given them the answers. And um, I don't think they were quite prepared for it at all. Uh, you know, we like to think things are going to stay the same. You know, before COVID, we thought things were just going to roll on like that forever, but it changed everything. Uh, the way we live, the way we interact, uh, it's definitely hurt the church quite a bit, uh, restricted us quite a bit from uh, activities, but hey, we're still rolling with it. We're still, still uh, growing. So verse one, Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Look at how beautiful this temple is that Herod has built. It's the finest of stones, best cut, the masonry, the, the way it's been put together, all the accent marks and all the uh, gold and the jewels. And it's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place to be. And they, they say, look at this, how beautiful this is. And Jesus, now they're going to hold this against him big time because they throw it right in his face again when he's hanging on, on the cross and, and even before. When Jesus said to them, see ye not all these things? He said, don't worry about what you see right now because things are going to change. He says, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they go, well, how in the what in the world's going to happen? How, how does this happen? It truly did happen. There's nothing left of the temple. It's gone. They pried up the very stones and chucked them over the side of the mountain. Uh, of course, the place where they call the Temple Mount today most likely isn't. That really <coughs> reeks of a, of, a, of a large Roman garrison area that's been fortified. Um, the temple was supposed to be built on the, uh, in the city of David. They found David's uh, temple, his home, and above it on that same ridge, as you go up towards the Temple Mount, there is a spot. Of course, now it's all covered with uh, housing, but they still wouldn't be able to find even one trace. And that's what they said before. They, they did all these test trenches and they didn't find a trace of a temple. Well, duh. It's all been chucked over the mountain. They, they find pieces of it rubble down in that in the valley, in Ohm, between there. So, um, so there'll not be one stone left upon another that shall not be thrown down. And, and then they, as they, they walked over, walked down and then walked up on the Mount of Olives and their, their area where they like to you know, come together. And the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the in, end of the world? And they're curious and I'm glad they asked these questions. So Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Don't be deceived by what people say and how people teach. Uh, he says, for many shall come in my name saying, I am the Messiah. You know, I'm, I'm the Christ. You know? And we've recently we've had what David Koresh and you know, different ones like that. The Jewish people have had uh, Rabbi, whatever his name, up in uh, New York, who's now dead. So obviously he wasn't it. Uh, you just had lots of different people come and go that say that they're they are the Messiah, but they're not. He says, and some of these will deceive many. Verse 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Then he homes in on a global prophecy. He says, for nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginnings of sorrows. And we've seen the worldwide devastation. We've seen the, 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 the uh, tidal wave down in uh, uh, Thailand. We've seen you know, uh, the tidal wave in Japan and Fukushima uh, nuclear facility being knocked out. And there's all kinds of things that have really rocked us uh, as a world. Um, and of course, we're all waiting for the big one in California. And we don't know what that's going to do to Hawaii. You, know? uh, you, you never know. It just depends on how the waves roll. Um, but all these things are just the beginning of sorrows. He says, then, transition here, shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you 
And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. For, for, the na for naming the name of Jesus Christ, people are going to hate you. They'll call you haters. They're going to uh, come after you. They're going to turn you in. He says, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And you'll see this, that iniquity can take people from the church. Because as iniquity abounds, their love waxes cold. We've seen in the COVID times just a lack of even simple kindness. It's been a victim of this COVID. Uh, but the, wax, the, the love of others is going to wax cold. Um, you could say this is a, one of the Laodicean type things of, of that age, um, which I guess we're pretty much in, right? Um, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Now, he particularly is talking to the Jews. You know, they are going to go off into Petra and hide um, at this end times. And he's going to give them the, the scenario of what's going to happen in the, in the kingdom. He says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations. And then shall the end come. And there are some that have gone, done, done a, lot, a great job. Uh, Wycliffe Bible translators have, you know, uh, preached, the, uh, translated the word of God into the individual dialects. And they're, they're getting down to the point where they're having a hard time finding new, new people to try to translate the Bible into. And, and um, but praise God for them. But it has gone into all the world. There is, that part of the prophecy is definitely not pending. Uh, there is nothing that's withholding Jesus Christ from coming back this moment, except for his own grace and mercy, because he's not willing for any should perish. He wants all to, come, to have the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and come to heaven, because he didn't make hell for us. He made hell for only Satan and his angels, you know. Um, and his time is coming soon. So, verse 15, he says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, three and a half years into the uh, seven years peace treaty with Israel, three and a half years into the tribulation period, where a lot of stuff is happening behind the scenes, Christians are being murdered right and left, secretly being turned in, and all that's going to be happening really rapidly. But after three and a half years, the temple uh, will be rebuilt in Jerusalem, in its proper spot, and they're about to worship. And the Antichrist comes in uh, as to be uh, a helper, supposedly, I guess, and then he's going to instead have everyone um, worship him and sacrifice a pig right in the temple. And it's, that's the abomination of desolation that's spoken of by Daniel the prophet. And when they see that happen, and they see it standing in the holy place. This is whosoever readeth, let him understand. I mean, as soon as you see this happen, the great tribulation has started, and you'd better run. And that's what he says. He says, Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to just to get his own clothing. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor shall ever be. Uh, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. It will be three and a half years, 1260 days. Um, he says, then, if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. And it's funny, you know, people, even today, you know, some guys say, I'm the Messiah, and everybody will flee, come to him out some mountaintop somewhere, and eh, it's not him. It's not even time. We haven't had the, the time of tribulation yet. The, the stuff hasn't happened in sequence, as Jesus has said. So, he says, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And so we know that the false prophet 
and um, you know the beast is going to arise. And so this is a prophecy to the Jewish nation. It says, Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, Jesus, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, Jesus, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Rapid. When he comes back, it's going to be something else. Now, we know that there is a sudden call, right, of us. We'll be, the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. All the believers will be up. That's before the uh, tribulation period. But what he's talking about here is when Christ comes back with his armies, he's just going to, to them, it's going to seem like he just poof appears. But if you had been reading the scriptures, you know that the end of the tribulation period is going to pass. And then at that point is when Jesus Christ is coming back. There is a little break there. We don't know how long that pause is before Christ comes back. But he's coming back after that tribulation period has ceased. Because um, there's going to be a period where Satan is uh, bodily grabbed and tossed down the uh, uh, bottomless pit and sealed. Um, and so he'll be there for 1,000 years where he cannot affect or afflict any human uh, wow a thousand years of peace and grace where no pestilence no sickness uh, the earth gives forth all of her bounty no more uh, curse on the earth and after a thousand years and all those generations have come up guess what they're still going to rise up and try to kill jesus it's, it's amazing because they release satan for just a little season just long enough for him to come and they're going to come after him and then the end comes very, very swiftly after that. But we'll get back to this. Uh, verse 28 says, For wheresoever the carcass is, there shall the eagles be gathered. Basically, there's going to be lots of death everywhere. And when Jesus comes back with his armies, those who oppose him don't stand a chance. In fact, their armies will, will, will stand up. They will be gathered together, but Jesus will speak a word. I don't know what that word is, but they're done for. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is where the blood runs as high as the horse's bridles. Ugh, that's a lot of death all at once for that to happen. So they, I know at different battles like Bull Run and uh, some of these other ones that they've had that, where the blood ran, Shiloh, where the blood ran on the ground enough. You know, but that's just, it's just, just a taste of the type of thing that's going to happen when Jesus Christ comes back and those who oppose God will get their just reward, what they've chosen for themselves. So it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Global prophecy there. He says, and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be, taken, shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Not be glad, because Jesus is there, but mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And this is the second coming of the Lord as he comes back. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. All the redeemed will be called out for his army. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When this branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Um, fig tree is a symbol for the nation of Israel. And as Israel has unfurled herself, uh, I wouldn't call it count 1948, but I'd call it six days for proof positive that Israel is a nation now. And uh, she is fully in blossom to the point where she can wreak havoc upon you know, Syria, Iran, and, and her enemies that are round about and can defend herself fairly well, but not completely. Um, understand that when, the parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, verse 32, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh, that Israel is a nation. It says, so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. When is this stuff gonna happen? Any time now, there's, there's no no restraint of it. Um, China's ready to go, million man army, start marching. 
uh, Tigris River is starting to dry up. So when the Tigris and Euphrates are dry, they can march over and try to destroy Israel. Um, there's just a lot of things being set up as, as, as we watch. And those of you who are watching, watch, pray. That's what Jesus says to do. It says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Well, 67, I, I was born in 66. Oop, I'm old. Uh, uh, so uh, my generation is going to see all these things fulfilled. Hmm. What does that mean for your generation? What does that mean for yours? It's almost here. Are you ready for him? Heaven and earth shall pass away. It says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. The days of Noah, 600 years. Pretty hard. Noah preached for 600 years trying to get anyone to come be saved on the ark. And who did he end up with? Just his family. It says, for in the days of Noah that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. They're not going to be reading the scriptures, so they're not going to be prepared. They're not going to be ready. And then Jesus will come. He says, shall two be in the field and one should be taken, the other left. Two women should be grinding at the mill. One should be taken, the other left. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Um, but know this, that if the goodman of the house had known which watch the thief would come, he would have, not, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Um, therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh, the Son of Man cometh. <laughs> He'll be here. So who then is faithful? And a wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Are you a good steward of what God has given to you and entrusted into your care? Do you own anything? No, we own nothing. It all belongs to God. So we are stewards of what God gives to us. Uh, fortunately, God has blessed, and you know, we, it feels like we're living out of the saucer, the, 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 you know, instead of the cup. Um, and the overflow is wonderful, but we're not guaranteed that. The only thing that's guaranteed in Scripture is tribulation, heart, hardness, things that are going to happen, uh, difficult times that are coming. So who's going to be faithful through it all? Who is going to be a good steward over the house? Who's going to provide uh, for the faithful during that time? It says, Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. And God sees you still working the works, even though it could cost you your life. It says, but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, I can do what I want to while I can now, and I'll just straighten up later. I'll ask for forgiveness later. I'll delay until a later time. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour when he is not aware and shall cut him asunder and appoint him as portion with the hypocrites. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't want to be in that number. I want to be in the number of Christ. I want to be named for Christ. I want him to see me still doing. In fact, my greatest pleasure would be that if God would just take me out and I was, I'd die when I was preaching or something, you know, like that. Might be shocking to you, but that would be what an honor to be preaching and then be translated. <laughs> my spirit you guys got to deal with the body but <laughs> you know it stinks anyway yeah if it's a rapture yes but i'm talking about if, if i pass before you know <laughs> oh my goodness but are you prepared are you ready for jesus christ to come back because he's coming whether you like it or not whether you're ready or not here i come here he comes um so stay prayed up stay prepared don't be weary in, in well-doing. Don't, uh, don't give up. 
Uh, the end is not yet, okay? And their greater days are still to come. We're going to see some things that are just plain, flat out miraculous that are going to happen. Worldwide events, local events, things that have that can defy uh, passing of our own knowledge. We're going to see things that are just going to be amazing. And we get to participate in it because we are the Lord's. We are his heritage. We are his children. And we love him. And he loves us more than we could ever love him. And he has a plan that... Uh, doesn't include defeat at all. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us beyond measure. We thank you, Lord, that you prepared the church and prepared us uh, for what's to come. Give us your strength. Give your hand upon us. Give your Holy Spirit to go out and uh, do the things that must be done for the ministry. Uh, raise up your numbers, Lord. Raise up a standard. Draw people to you. Lord, as you've been lifted up, you'll draw all men to you. I pray, Father, that you draw all men to you now. And, Lord, build your church the way you would have it. And build us in our hearts as you would have us to be built. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Family, burdens are lifted in.